It's important to understand how do banks make money before I delve into the income statement of bank. In this session, I will explain bank business model. I will cover the details that are enough to understand the income statement of bank. Let's start with How do banks make money? First, let's try to understand sources of fund for banks. Individual people and companies have accounts with banks. They deposit money in different t y p e of accounts. Typically, it includes current account, savings account, fixed deposit, and so on. This is one of the sources of money for banks. There are several other sources like borrowing from central bank that is RBI, issuing bond, and so on. Depending on the sources of fund, bank pays interest for providing capital. Now let's understand how do banks utilize these funds? Banks are involved in the business activities of lending money and investing. They can lend money to the companies, individual people in various forms. The loans include personal loan, housing loan, vehicle loan, business loan, and so on. They can invest this money in various securities. The goal here is to earn higher rate of interest on capital. Thus, banks' profit is derived from the difference between the interest rate. Let's summarize the business model again. Bank borrows money at lower interest rate from various sources. In turn, it lends money at higher interest rate to individual people or companies in various forms as loan. Bank profits from the difference between the interest rates. This is also called as interest income. This is the primary source of income for banks. Banks are involved in various other business activities and e a r n s additional income. This is called as non interest income. This income is collected through various services offered for fees. Typically, it includes investment services offered like mutual funds, investment advisory services, commissions, and brokerage for various services. Investment income. Income through fees on various things like overdraft fee, minimum balance fee, lost card fee, statement fee, and so on. I hope you found it simple to understand bank business model. In banking, you would have frequently come across t e r m called as NPA. Let's understand what is NPA. NPA stands for non performing assets. Bank lends money to borrower in form of loan. In return, borrower a g r e e to pay part of principal and interest on monthly basis. Hence, loans are considered as assets for the banks. The ideal scenario for bank would be every lender pays loan principal and interest on time. This would have made bank's business model bulletproof. However, this is not the case in real world. Individual people and companies default on loan due to various reasons. If borrower failed to pay installment for a period of more than 90 days, the loan will become non performing assets for the bank. In other w o r d bank will absorb loan default as loss and add it under expense bucket from accounting perspective. This means as NPA goes up, stock price goes down. Now it's time to review two key terms. Gross NPA and net NPA. Let's understand with example. Person borrows $10,000 from bank. Assume after paying few installments, he stops paying for more than 90 days. Hence, loan will become non performing assets for the bank. Let's assume remaining balance is $7,000. As banks know s that there is higher probability that few loans will default. Banks reserve certain quota of money as provision for doubtful loans at the start of financial year. Let's assume for this loan bank has provision of $2,000. Hence, the gross NPA will be $7,000. However, net NPA will be $5,000. As an investor, it's good enough to understand banks' business model, NPA, and provisions before you delve into bank financial statements. Thank you.